you meet Carolyn John Shoppers. Uh, I forgot Kyle was counting down. Uh, I've stolen Raphael's mug because he's not here. Uh, good evening and welcome to our brand spanking new table of comic books. Um, so all this stuff will come out tomorrow. Feel free to claim spiffy variant covers or shiny variant covers or variant covers that aren't either of those. Or two. regular covers. Or regular covers. Or graphic novels, especially graphic novels. They're heavy. Um, we have some upcoming announcements. We have a handy dandy flyer that John dropped off before he went on vacation. Um, so I will uh, convey those to you. Not this weekend, but the weekend after is Fan Expo in Cleveland, downtown at the Convention Center from the 12th through the 14th, which is very fun. We always love it when more comic people are in town. During that Fan Expo, during that convention, we'll have a sale in the store. So we'll have half off back issues for that weekend from the 12th through the 14th, and we'll have 10% off everything else in the store. So graphic novels, supplies, it's a very good time to get it. Um, the Thursday after that, on April 18th, is our next Late Night Comics, where we will also have half off graphic novels, 60 new long boxes of Marvel and DC. They're probably not all new. Most of them. Mostly new. We got some new collections, so there's new stuff in there. And then if you buy 100 or more comics that night during that sale, they become 50 cents each. So essentially, essentially you get 50 more comics if you're willing to get 50 and you pay the same price. And then that weekend, April 20th, uh, that Saturday is Sonic the Hedgehog Day for us. We have exciting things going on. We have a, van, a fantastic local cosplayer who does a fantastic Eggman, Dr. Eggman, who will be here. And then uh, Natalie Haynes is a visiting creator of Sonic and My Little Pony. But for this purpose, it's Sonic. Um, so she'll be here for an appearance. Uh, that'll be from noon to two. So we'll update you on that as that comes up. Um, we didn't get a chance to show you at the very beginning of the video, but it is five weeks until Free Comic Book Day, which means that we have our bum -ba -da -da, Free Comic Book Day print available. Luckily and fantastically and excitingly, Com Free Comic Book Day is on May the 4th this year, so Star Wars themed. Our mural will be Star Wars themed. Our print is Star Wars themed. And uh, we're giving these away. So with a purchase, stop in the shop, grab a print. Uh, one per person. Right. I think that's it for exciting new things yeah is that not enough that's enough exciting new things right? sure that's a lot um i'm gonna take my friend home tonight we have one first appearance this week uh there's a new deadpool ongoing series started and the new villain in this co is called death rip john shoot make your face uh, <laughs> so that's cool that's one first appearance we haven't had a ton of first appearances each week it's been we slower like too um so i'm gonna continue to abscond with Raphael's mug and we've got a very very exciting bottom of the table um this week was very big, so we have it split up. You'll see some more image books at the end of the video. Stay tuned. Uh, but the exciting part about image this week is that uh, jo Jeff Johns' editorially run part of image, uh, the Ghost Machine, has released all three of their main flagship titles. Uh, we have been raving about the stories that are now fully appearing in these books, but we've been raving about them since the uh, Mad Ghost, Ghost, I'm sorry, Ghost one Machine one-shot. Uh, so they all started out with small stories, like six or so pages, and gave us like little introductions to the characters, and they kind of got us all jazzed up. And I'll tell you, it was worth the wait. So mm -hmm. April 3rd, 2024, we've got three new ongoing series from Image, Rook, Exodus, uh, Redcoat, and Geiger, which had a previous miniseries but is now at full ongoing mode, um, all written by Jeff Johns but with different artists. So Rook, Exodus is a double-sized first issue for only $3.99. Um, you got Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok on there. Red Code has Brian Hitch and Jeff Johns. And Geiger, you got Gary Frank and Jeff Johns. And all three of them were fantastic reads. They were definitely the first three that all of us read this week. Um, we were so excited to get these under our belt. I'll give you a quick rundown on, on each one of them, just in case you haven't heard us talk about them yet. Um, Rook Exodus is a very dystopian type of story on a not Earth, but Earth, um, where the only people left after kind of everybody has escaped from this Earth are these hunter-gatherer scavenger guys who all have a semi-connection through these helmets to uh, an animal species, but the animals are starting to, like, really lose it and turn on them. So it's, it makes a really interesting story where they share a connection with the animal, but the animal also shares a connection with them. It, it gets really hairy and, and very good storytelling-wise. Literally. 
Oh, yes. especially at the end, very hairy. Yeah. Uh, Red Coat is one that we were all really looking forward to, even though Brian Hitch is doing the artwork. But you can tell, <laughs> you can tell, <laughs> you can tell that Brian Hitch is actually enjoying the artwork he's doing on this. It's not phoning in on, like Venom. <laughs> <laughs> um, this a hole of a uh, Revolutionary War soldier. Uh, stumbled onto immortality immortality essentially in a really great way i'm not going to ruin it for you but it's a very good origin story issue and he is not a reputable human being uh, he's just fumbling his way through life so um he dies in a lot of ways that he deserves <laughs> and it, they go through that and it's super super fun also four bucks and then geiger if you read the first six issues they're fantastic and this continues right from there if you haven't read them pick up that graphic because Gary Frank is second to none on this book with artwork, and Jeff Jones just continues to kill it. But you've got a uh, Fallout-esque wasteland right outside of Vegas, and this guy's just trying to survive with his two-headed dog and be left alone, and the world and all its apocalyptic nonsense won't let him do that. Uh, but he's essentially radioactive Batman, yes. yep, which is great. Uh, so those three books, as a primer, we've got big stacks of them because we are super behind them. But we've got some cool variants, too. So uh, for Geiger, we've got a 1 in 50 foil variant cover. Also for Rook, um, those connect, which is pretty cool. And the connect looks like this. So the Rook one, is uh, they have a cover price, non-spiffy, shiny version. Uh, Geiger, the same way. And then Red Coat. Uh, someone claimed our spiffy shiny one, but we've got the regular one too. So you can get all three connecting to kick off this fantastic imprint at Image. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? Yeah, there's other characters back there too from the on upcoming series. Oh, they reveal that one at the end of Rook, and I'm like, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was the one that we were all kind of really afraid was going to be a little too far removed, but it's probably the one that we all enjoyed the most. Mm. Yeah, concur. From last week, we still have a previews left, so if you missed that one, you got an IDW, Marvel, and Diamond previews available there. And then one reprint from Image is The Last Mermaid, number one, which did very well for us. It's a very whimsical sci-fi story, uh, and we'll get to more of that because number two came out this week. Then, you want to go this way? Uh, yeah, sure. That's cool. Uh, Gunslinger Spawn is on issue number 30. We'll call that cover A, and then this is cover B. And we got a new issue of Love Everlasting there on number, I can't see the bottom, 14. Crave is on number five. You got Antarctica on number 10, and a new issue of Sacrificers puts us at a new story arc on number 7. Fantastic second story arc for this one. Like, really jazzed about this book. It's bleak, but with a purpose. And then we've got a 1 in 10 variant available there for number 7. Right above it, if you trust me, get the volume 1 of Sacrificers by Rick Remender. It's issues 1 through 6. Quickly, I will read anything recommended, but it quickly grew on the rest of these guys mm -hmm. after my insistence, and now they're all caught up and can't wait for an issue eight. Mm -hmm. okay. oh. Because Ben will talk about Rick Remender till the cows comes home, I finally did catch up on it. Worth every penny. You should get this book. It's great. I, I did get caught up, and I'm so happy I did. Uh, issues one through six, only sixteen ninety nine. dollars uh, Really fantastic first volume. I can't wait for more of this book. And then they're on a schedule, too. Forged from Image is on volume two of their paperback. Then we've got new issues of Deep Cuts. Uh, this is the last in the miniseries. I think it's number six. Last Mermaid is on number two. And then one new number one. It's a one-shot from Image. Hack slash Kill Your Idols is all about Cassie Hack and Vlad killing the jerks of the 90s superhero craze from Image. So like yes. Super Patriot. Shadowhawk. Shadowhawk. Uh, Bloodstrike. Some people from Bloodstrike. All those guys we've rolled our eyes at over the years. Yes. A uh, couple more collected editions from Image. You got Volume 2 of Local Man, which I cannot wait to read. And the last volume of Firepower, Volume Number 6. Reprinted from Marvel this week, you got Avengers Twilight Number 2. We got Edge of Sp 3. Oh, is this Number 3 reprinted? Yep. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Edge of Spider-Verse Number 1 reprinted, which is a, a fantastic oh. Weapon 8 story in it. Unbelievably good. And then Spider-Punk, the most recent miniseries, uh, pumping out a reprinted Number 1. So if you missed that, and number two is out too last week. Epic collection from Marvel is X-Men uh, Children of the Atom reprinted. We got the whole miniseries of Spider-Man India, the whole miniseries of Deadpool Badder Blood, and then new alien stuff from Marvel this week, uh, Black, White, and Blood number three. That's cover A. This is cover B. Another collected edition from Marvel, Epic uh, Daredevil collection. I can't read it upside down. The Concrete Jungle. Thank you. And then we're on to Venom number 32. 
with not Brian Hitch artwork. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we, that was cover A. This is cover B. This is cover C, which is growing on me every time I look at it. And then a 1 in 10 design cover. Star Wars is new this week with number 45. Uh, that's cover A. And then we've got a 1 in 25 variant there. I think they're on to the trial of Lando Calrissian. That's why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> uh, John Shear's favorite facsimile edition thus far? No, we shoot three ones. But we John Shear's second, second favorite, favorite facsimile yes. edition thus far. <laughs> and probably Follow the greatest, uh, second greatest Secret Wars cover. Number four, uh, facsimile edition of Marvel Superhero Secret Wars. That's cover A. You yeah, have your mouth open so, like mean, you're going to well, say no, something. No. No, you're uh, then we've got a 1 in 25 yeah. cover, which is like a reimagining. And then a Spiffy Shiny yeah. cover of number four. Yes. Okay. But no, uh, issue three was the one that I was most excited about. But John had like one copy on the table, so right. I didn't talk about it at all. Well, issue four is <laughs> yeah. good, too. Issue four is fantastic. You don't have to ruin their night, dude. It's a <laughs> Uh, Deadpool, the saga of Wade Wilson is a weird, as a Deadpool fan, I'm going to say it's a weird collection of Wade Wilson appearances. It's kind of spread out across the board. There's a good chunk of story from the Joe Kelly original Deadpool ongoing, and then a good chunk of the Daniel Way ongoing, but those are like almost 20 years apart, which is kind of odd, but both fantastic stories, just a little odd choice as far as uh, what they're doing. But the good, bad, and the ugly storyline is in here from the Daniel Way run with Deadpool, Wolverine, and... Um, Captain America freeing a concentration camp for mutants, and it is a fantastically ugly, good story. Uh, so that trade paperback's on the table, getting ready for the new Deadpool Wolverine movie. Now we've got Vengeance of the Moon Knight number four. You do get a reveal in here as to who this mysterious Moon Knight replacement is. So that's probably worth reading. That's cover A. Here's cover B. We've got the Vampire Homage cover variant C, and then a 1 in 25 for that one. Above Deadpool, we got uh, Jason Aaron's Ghost Rider Omnibus. Ooh. So it is a collection of, I, I mean, no one writes Ghost Rider like Jason Aaron. So the collection of the back half of the ongoing series that he finished off, and then the mini series of uh, Johnny and Danny reuniting in there, too. Next to it, you've got the Immortal Thor with a crazy fun fourth wall breaking cover. Uh, that's number nine. There's cover B, the vampire variant. Cover C is gorgeous. And then the all art variant of cover C uh, with the one in 50 cover. Fall, the House of X has a tie-in with Avengers number 12. That's your cover A. There's your cover B, another vampire variant. Uh, cover C is a Stormbreakers cover. And then Doctor Strange is on number 14. That's the second part of the current story arc. That's your cover A. And then a 1 in 25 cover. Captain America is on number 8. Uh, cover A there, another vampire variant with cover B. Cover C is the Marvel Masterpieces cover. And then a big number one from Marvel this week that we absolutely expect to sell out of because we didn't think it was going to be good. <laughs> not I mean, wrong. we didn't. Um, Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin is a story that takes place in the very early years of Spider-Man. I would say like weeks after he's bitten by the spider. Um, he is the, the best part about the book is that they don't shy away from it showing Peter and Aunt May really dealing with the grief of the death of Uncle Ben. They're not... They're not just like moving past it into superhero stuff. It plays a very big part into him acting as Spider-Man. And it's very, very well written. It's not just like Green Goblin in your face and they're fighting in the sky right away. It is a really good setup. Five issues? Yeah. Five issue story. It's gonna be a good one. We're gonna reorder more. So I would check this one out, take our take our uh recommendation on that one. Written by the um J.M. Demetis, who's written a lot of like very good Green Goblin stories. There we go. Uh, so there's your cover A, and we've got a cover B with a blank green cover. Fall the House of X tie in again. Uh, X Men number 33. They're ramping up to the end of this big X Men story, so every X book is going to have a lot going on in it. There's there's no uh, exception with number 33 here. So that's 33 cover A, and we've got a 1 in 50 Marvel Masterpieces all art cover available there, which is provocative. I really did think that was bread. I thought that was bread too. Thank you. It looks like bread. She looks hungry. Power Pack. <laughs> Into the Storm is on number four. Uh, we only have one cover for that one. And then the uh, big top of the table where we got a bunch of covers. Deadpool started a new ongoing series. It is pretty much a direct continuation of Alyssa Wong's Deadpool series, but this one's written by Cody Ziegler. Um, you still got uh, the Carnage symbiote puppy. They have a great relationship, so it's really fun to see that unfold. Uh, he is about, Deadpool is about to start building a new team of mercs for himself, which is going to be very entertaining. So there's your cover A. Uh, we've got a vampire variant cover B, 
Cover C is by Rob Liefeld. Cover D is blank. Cover E is a Stormbreaker cover, and that bear looks very sad. Then we've got a Spiffy Shiny variant and a 1 in 25 to hit the table. Uh, and that's your potent Marvel week. And now to your not-so-potent DC week. But there is some great stuff because Batman is on Dark Prisons Part 2. Uh, like, this is going on. Joker, Punchline, they're all, like, Riddler. They've all been captured by Failsafe and the breakout happens. Oh. So regular cover there. We've got the 1 to 25 variant. And then we have the amazing homage, like Mazzuccelli. Like, it's Fornas doing Mazzuccelli on the so 1 in 50 cool. variant. So cool. uh, Poison Ivy's on issue 21. Who would have thought it would go 21 issues and still be good? Yeah. So, yeah. So regular cover there. A very wonderful Biquis Evely 1 in 25 variant for that one there. Uh, Suicide Squad, before they kill the Justice League, they've got to kill Arkham Asylum. That's on issue number three. Uh, Birds of Prey, issue number eight, part two in the current storyline. Uh, as angry as I was about Power Girl, I'm just as excited about this because it is a beautiful and brilliant book. It's great. You can just read this one if you felt like it. Fantastic. Keep going. Yeah, It's great. Issue, regular cover, Derek Chu cover B. Uh, Shazam. New writer, uh, new creative team, uh, all, as they say, moving day, issue number 10. Uh, final part of the Superman 78, uh, the Metal Curtain. It's been good. Uh, let's go to Blue Beetle number 8, still going on. Uh, but Neil Before Zod is dealing with the repercussions of issue number 3. And then Sandman Remastered, it is by Neil Gaiman, Charles Vess. It's a reprint of... Nine, number 19. Number 19. It's this, we call it the Shakespeare issue. It's beautiful, newly recolored, newly redone. It's very nice. One of the first issues of Sandman I ever read. Uh, and then we'll go to collections. JLA Book 1, uh, the Grant Morrison run from issues 1 through 9, along with a bunch of other miniseries and one-shots all collected in one big honking collection. Don't, uh, don't let Blue Superman turn you off because that is fantastic JLA writing. It is, Grant Morrison was given Aquaman with a harpoon for a hand, Superman as, like, in blue electricity, and was like, I'm going to make these better than the writers who did them, and he did, mm -hmm. and it was great. So, yeah, it, that there, uh, Superman, Lois, and Clark, Doom Rising, it's all the backups from Action Comics and the special, John, Jonathan Kent's still growing up, and they're still teaching him the right, the right things to do. Uh, Sandman Universe, Nightmare Country, Glass House. Uh, too bad you can't see behind the eyes. Freak Kyle out. Uh, <laughs> hardcover collection of that. 100 Bullets, Volume 1. First, what, 20 issues of 100 Bullets? First, yeah. First 19 issues of 100 Bullets. I'm very excited about this as far as being grabby. Yeah. Um, 100 Bullets is one of the best concepts in comics, and people really sleep on this because it is 100 issues, so, like, I get it. It's a lot. But essentially, in the beginning story arcs when they're introducing this, some clandestine FBI, CIA guy with a briefcase and sunglasses shows up when you're down in the dumps, hands you a briefcase with all the evidence you need to prove that the person you think wronged you wronged you and a gun with a hundred bullets. And they say, you can do what you want with this. No consequences. If you decide to go after them, fine. If you decide to stick this under your bed, if you try to throw it in the river, whatever, here's what's up. Now, obviously they have motivations and stuff elsewhere, but it's a fantastic just bit of mystery like not noir but almost really really good stuff and the first collection is almost standalone in what you need to, you don't need to read it's like oh to find out the whole clandestine stuff it's just moral how your morals work mm -hmm. and it's great uh cyborg homecoming collections in there uh, unstoppable doom patrol which was beautiful because chris burnham drew it the whole collection is there spirit world that whole collection is there but then we get to oh, my here exciting. He here he goes. Yes, I'm excited. Andrea, back up! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just League versus Godzilla versus Kong. They're doing their quote-unquote final printings. And <laughs> issue one, issue two, issue three, issue four. Get them all. They make one big giant cover. And for as lame as issue one was, issue two, three, and four have been fantastic. Like, if you haven't read it, now's your time to start jump on it's one more issue left to go it's great it's everything you want from this sort of team up slash fight i love it 
I'm so excited for the hardcover when it comes out. It was everything I wanted, really, really. Uh, and then the next collection from Fantagraphics, Light It, Shoot It, is 1970s Hollywood noir. Uh, bad stuff happens. It's like really like Fantagraphics. It's almost got a very much uh, Ed Brubaker type of feel to it, even if the art doesn't sort of portray that, the story does. Uh, how the War Began, we had this last week, Dispatches from the Ukrainian Invasion, still on the table because it's important. Uh, Usagi Ojimbo, Crow Part 1. Uh, if you've never read Usagi, you can jump right on here. A bunch of the characters that have been in the past are reintroduced here. Lots of bounty hunting going on. Uh, Moral Terrors is on issue number three. Minor Threats is back with the new issue of number one, uh, the co-written Pat Oswalt series. We've got the regular cover, and then we've got a cover B. And then we've got a cover C for that one there. Uh, and then we got collections. Yeah, Another from one. IDW and the Scott Snyder imprint over there, you've got Dark Space's Good Deeds, uh, which is pretty much the most gruesome and weird Florida can be in a miniseries. <laughs> uh, great mystery. You got Damn Them All from Boom. They're on Trade Paperback Volume 2. Uh, Ghost Lore is on number 9, which is one that I'm staying up with. I'm, I'm digging Colin Bunn's take on this. Grim is back with number 16 and a beautiful cover. And then a big number one from IDW, you got Godzilla versus the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, part two, number one. So they are still fighting. Uh, we've got a row of reprints that we are super stoked about. Uh, we have all four issues of Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. Yeah, phenomenal. We love Yay. Beneath the Trees. It's so weird and gross and bloody and well told. And um, adorable. This is <laughs> absolutely a series that we would tell everybody who is old enough to read it to read it. Um, if you like serial killer stuff, please take our stuff on this. All four issues available right now. We've got the third print of number one, third print of number two, second print of number two, three print of number two, second print of number three, and the first print of number four, which is have the climax of the book. So number five is going to be the last issue, and we're just freaking out about it. And I don't understand why, but we still have the one in 25 variant of number four, which is phenomenal and well worth the cost. Especially if you've read the issue since then. Especially if you've read the issue. Right below that, uh, semi-produced by Marvel, semi-produced by another company, The Avengers. It is a complete guide to the characters and the uh, up to modern times, so all the younger characters who have ex been experienced in The Avengers now, uh, with an introduction by Mark Wade, Wade which is cool. Another fantastic row of reprints. Woo. Uh, Transformers 1 through 4 reprinted this week. We have 5, six, five and 6 over on the wall. Um, so you can get totally caught up on Transformers. Another series that we couldn't recommend more highly. None of us, except for maybe John Cheer because of his nostalgia, was a Transformers fan up until this point. And now we are in. Like, all in. Totally excited. Uh, going along with the Energon universe, we do have a new issue of void rivals so they're on number eight uh we're in the second story arc now and it is ramping up with action um they're about to really jam the energon universe into the rest of the series um and i'm stoked so number eight uh cover a cover b cover c which is even more menacing after i've read it uh we got one in 25 cover and we got a one in 50 cover too that dude's bow is rad it's like dark sides omega beams in this issue which is sweet uh, and then we got some all-ages stuff. So from DC, Bad Dream is a story about the new JLA-ish character, Dreamer. Right? Mm -hmm. She's going to play a big part in Amanda Waller's Absolute Power stuff coming up. Uh, Club Microbe is the most adorable thing on the table this week. These germs speak for themselves. They're all single cells until they're not, and they'll tell you all about it. <laughs> uh, we got a Monkey King all-ages graphic novel. Archie's doing hot rod racing with Hot Wheels. Sonic the Hedgehog Fang miniseries is on number three. And we've got a new issue of Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries. So that's our new comic table. You'll see some boxes down here. We're going to add some more because, like I said, we've been getting some new collections trickling, which is wonderful for us because it gives us a lot of fun stuff to process. But other than that, I think that's it for Tuesday night, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? So we've got a lot of stuff coming up. We'll see you guys for those. But most importantly, we'll see you tomorrow for your comic books.